Okay, good morning. And a very warm welcome to, to Keele University. Thank you very much indeed for coming to see us today. Um, my name's Trevor McMillan. I have the great privilege of being the Vice Chancellor here today. And um, what we've tried to do in the context of this whole open day is to give you the information that you need. Clearly, what we're going to do is tell you a lot about what we do here at Kiel, um, a lot about what we think is very good about Kiel, in the hope that you will recognize um, those attributes that fit, um, that actually makes Kiel somewhere that you may well want to consider coming to uh, when you come to university. But the critical thing is that it is about you. It's about a very, very personal decision that you have to make. One of the biggest decisions of your lives, so no pressure, um, but something, as I say, that is very much geared at what you want out of university, what you want out of life, how you want your university years to play through, and what you want to do. So today is about presenting all of that in front of you. I hope we've managed to do that. And I'll say right at the beginning, if there is something that isn't obvious to you today, that isn't uh, given to you in a specific way, then do ask. One of the things that I will talk a lot about in the next 20 minutes or so is that sense of community here we have and the, the helpful friendliness between both staff and indeed through students. And you'll see a lot of people out there in purple and turquoise t-shirts. So do please ask anyone any question and if they don't know the answer, they'll certainly take you to where you can find that answer. So my job, as I say, in the next 15, 20 minutes is, is actually twofold. It's to give you, first of all, a very high level view of what we do at Kiel and what we think about at Kiel and a little bit about why we do what we do. Um, and the second but probably more important bit is that I'm just the warmer pact because the second part of this session is to be given by Kieran who's one of our second year history students and he's going to take you through his journey to Kiel, both what happened before and indeed what's happening to him now as he goes through his, his studies. Um, so that's how we're going to try and play it through in the next 35 to 40 40 minutes. In general terms, Kiel University was founded in 1949, so actually if you do come to Kiel, then you'll be arriving um, during our 70th birthday celebrations. Um, 1949, an interesting time in this country, um, a time when lots of negotiations were going on with Europe, a time when we weren't quite sure what was going on in America, a time when we weren't quite sure what was going on in the Far East, and a time actually of some anticipation, but actually a feeling of uncertainty. What jobs were going to be available over the next post-war years? How was that going to play through? How was technology going to influence the way uh, jobs and everything else and li our lives were going to be changing? And we think nothing much has changed, because the answer then, and I believe the answer now, is actually to prepare our students for their whole lives ahead. Yes, it's important that we prepare them for their first job, it's important that they get into employment very, very quickly. But the things are going to change very quickly. Some of you in this room who are about to embark on your university lives might well be still alive in the next century. That feels like a long time away. And imagine how much is going to change during that time. So a lot of what we do at Kiel is really around giving you those skills, those attitudes, those approaches that actually will help you adapt as things change over the next few years. Biggest university campus in the UK, 630 acres, um, a lot of parkland, a quite a tight core where we have, as you'll see today, a lot of our academic activities and indeed uh, a lot of our accommodation in pretty close proximity to each other. But if you want to get away within five minutes walk, you can be alongside one of our seven or eight lakes within the woodlands and actually just a little bit of peace and quiet is very, very close at hand. And that might sound a little bit soft, but actually our students certainly value that and indeed do our, do our staff. A broad-based university, and again, that's an important point to make because we, we're not one of the biggest universities, but actually we think it's important that actually we have the wide range of disciplines. The, the, probably the big thing we don't do is engineering very much. We do have some pockets of that. But apart from that, we have a big, the full breadth. And, and again, I'll come back to how those sorts of things come, come together 
in terms of our students having the ability to actually get that broad knowledge and importantly, even if they don't do anything formal in different subjects, are interacting all the time with people who are doing different subjects and from different backgrounds. And that's all part of what Life at Kiel is about. And we do have over 100,000 alumni right around the world. Pretty much from the word go, Kiel was an internationally facing university. Um, and certainly when I go around the world, the loyalty that people have around the world to their Kiel experience is absolutely fantastic. I was in Hong Kong, China, just a few weeks ago. And um, the students come up and are very supportive of each other. And that's one of the networks that Kiel can provide. When you've done a degree here, they're instantly into that network of support and the, the links back to the university campus. So a few numbers. Um, over 10,000 students, um, high proportion local. Um, up to 10% international at various times, but increasingly also from right around the UK. And that's, that diversity is increasing all the time. Just under 3,000 bedrooms that we have on campus for, uh, for undergraduates, um, and a combination of different degrees. Traditionally, Kiel put a lot of emphasis on four-year degrees with a foundation year that then fed quite naturally into uh, the final three years, um, where actually every, sub every student used to do two, two subjects in the final three years. We still have over 30% of our students doing two subjects. Again, we think that's important. We have a lot of choice within the different curricula, and you'll see that within the paperwork that, that you get. But we also have those single on the streams where if you're absolutely sure that you know what you want, you come in for three years and you study that, that subject for those three years, um, and that's what you concentrate on. Although, as I say, some flexibility within some of, some of that. We still don't have the integrated foundation yet. And what that means is if you're coming in here and you haven't quite done the right A-levels, you're not quite sure what you want to do, then uh, it does take that extra year, but it is an opportunity to actually get into university life, to try different subjects, and then decide what you want to do for uh, the rest of your time here. As I say, that has always been a feature of Kiel, and it is something that we value hugely. Of course, you can always hear vice chancellors stand up and say a lot of good things about their, their university. And I am going to give you one or two of our accolades in, in a moment. I will add one <coughs> note of caution, though, that whenever you hear vice chancellor talk about a league table, we always absolutely implicitly believe those in which we've done well. If we haven't done some well, then there must be something wrong with the methodology. So that's. That's where you've got to come from, um, from vice chancellors in general. We try very hard to talk about the ones where actually they've been fairly consistent and, and they reflect us in a way that we think is appropriate. This has been this week's excitement. Unfortunately, we didn't win. So the, the prize ceremony was on Thursday night down in London. And it's for the first time in Kiel's history, we've been shortlisted for uh, University of the Year in what are effectively the university uh, equivalent of national, national awards. Um, very exciting buzz around the university, and for me, very proud of the university in the sense that it's an acknowledgement that actually we're doing some really good stuff here. And some of those other indicators. So the one on the left, you will see in a number of different situations. The teaching excellence framework. We got a, a gold in the teaching excellence framework first time round, now two, two and a half years ago. For those of you who know about higher education, in a bit more detail, you'll know that there is some debate as to exactly what that measures. Is it measuring teaching excellence? Whatever that debate actually comes down on, the truth is that it is a combination of a number of different factors. It does take into account what our students think about us. It takes into account how well our students do afterwards. It takes into account the nature of the facilities that we have. So none of those are very easy to measure, but as a group, that again is an important marker that actually across the board, the experience and the education that we provide for our students is of a very high standard. And if we go through research, very high quality research, and I'll come back to that in a moment, the employability, I'll talk about that briefly at the end, very high proportion, 96% in the latest figures of our students are in jobs six months after they, they leave Kiel or doing, doing further, further study. And increasingly what we're seeing is that those students are going into graduate level 
jobs. So a very, very high proportion of that 97% actually are in jobs that actually have needed that degree in, in the first place. Job first in England for course satisfaction. And then an interesting combination, and again I'll come back to the rationale for this, in terms of a top 10 in a, a league table that you probably didn't see, it was within, largely within the sector. But what it was, was to try and combine teaching and research. So as you go around universities, you will find some that are almost exclusively devoted to teaching. You'll probably find some that are really, really good at research and actually are pretty good with the students, but sometimes the research actually feels as if it's a little bit over-dominant on the students. We like to get that balance right. And that joint measure, it was a sort of you know, one access on teaching, one access on research, and we were there in the top 10, showing that we try and combine those two things together. And then the last one, the National Student Survey. Again, you've probably heard quite a lot about that. National Student Survey is something that all of our students do in their final year of study, sometime between Christmas and Easter. It's a national level um, assessment and they go online and they fill in various questions. We absolutely do not consider our students to be customers, but it is the nearest thing that we have to a customer satisfaction survey within the university sector. And I'm pleased to say for the last eight or nine years, Kiel has been in the top 10 with the exception of one year, and actually in four out of the last five years, we've been top in England. Sometimes we've been joint. Um, this year, uh, we'll buy ourselves as top in England in terms of those public, broad-based universities. We weren't quite top in the UK. Aberystwyth in, in Wales was ahead of us. St Andrews in Scotland, so hence we're top in England. That's the way we talk about these things. But nevertheless, think about how many universities there are in England. And to be in that position for four out of the last five years, again, is a stunning achievement. And I often get asked, why, why do you achieve that? How do you achieve that? And it's quite hard to bottle. It's quite hard to know what, what we do. But what I'm absolutely convinced by is that actually it's a reflection of what happens every day with every member of staff and every student on this campus. Because actually it's not just about what our students see at the, at the, uh, in the classroom, at the chalk face, as it were. But it's their interactions with every single member of staff, whether it be in the schools or whether even if it's in the accommodation. All of those things combine in order to uh, lead to that score. But clearly what you'd be here for primarily and focused on is the education. And just to give you a, a brief view of the, the sort of breadth of the approach to education that we take. Clearly, on the left-hand side, academic excellence. One of the primary aims, if not the primary aim, of a university is to have you to leave university as an expert in the subject or the subjects that you've studied. And that's got to be at the heart. That's got to be the experts that we have in terms of our subjects in our schools, actually helping you to achieve those learning, learnings in both the skills and the facts that take you through. So that's absolutely critical. But also the skills that go with that. That ability to work with other people, that ability to actually concentrate, to evaluate, to actually assess what is, um, what is true, that in itself is not easy these days in the age of the, of the internet. The motto for Kiel is the search for truth in the company of friends. So actually the skills in order to do that are becoming harder and harder, but hope we, hopefully we achieve and manage to do that. We also though recognize that the time at university is an important development time. And you can gain an awful lot outside the curriculum and outside the classroom. So the idea of active citizenship, we have one of the biggest volunteering programs, for example, in the UK universities. And then finally, that aspect of personal development. Again, those interactions, the, the number of societies we have that allow you to spread your wings, try new things that you've maybe never tried before and you might never have the chance to do uh, again. Whether that be sport, whether that be all sorts of societies, whether it be faith societies, all of those sorts of things come together in terms of that development that you achieve while you're at university. And if you do that and we get it right, then actually there are a whole load of different characteristics. And one of the things we do quite often at Kiel is step back and think not just what do we want to teach our students, because as academics, we're all very keen on talking about the things that we know quite a lot about. The important thing is that we go to the other end and we say, what do we want our students 
to know what do we want our students to be able to do when they leave university and how do we then develop a curriculum that actually achieves that. And if we can do it, these are the sorts of things that we do, that self-confidence, that flexibility, the problem solving, the working collaboratively, all of those things that in the workplace are absolutely critical to success on a day-to-day -day basis. I said I'd mention research, and that, that might seem a little bit far away from where you are now and maybe not particularly relevant, but there's a couple of things around research. The first is that the reputation of the university is hugely enhanced by the research that we do. It's absolutely critical that in terms of our national profile, our national reputation, and our international reputation, that the research is very good here. And that reputation of the university then translates into the reputation of the degrees that you would hold if you came here to, to Kiel. I could talk a long time about the research, but one of the things I wanted to emphasize was that here again at Kiel, we try to do research that has a relevance, that is addressing some of the key challenges of the day. And these are the three areas that actually we are really focusing on around the university. And we literally have hundreds of academics working in these areas addressing global health, social inclusion, sustainability. And I hope you would agree that actually if we can make any contribution to those three areas, then it's likely to be highly worthwhile. In the context of all of that, again, very conscious that universities cannot exist just in bubbles. We have to create very important links with all sorts of parts of society. If you're doing a health-related degree, clearly the NHS is an important partner, um, but also increasingly around business schools. We have an integrated business park. There's actually 30-something uh, companies actually exist on this campus. And we increasingly work with them in all sorts of ways for them to be able to provide opportunities for our students in terms of work placements, internships, actually support our students who want to start up their own businesses because some of them um, do that. But also it allows us to take some of those local companies and actually take them internationally. And again, that international reach is absolutely critical for us. So working with large businesses, small businesses, all of that actually enhances the research and increases the opportunities that we have for our, our students. And in terms of that global reach, there are a variety of ways that actually we approach that. Because again, we recognize that while we might consider around the world, our politicians aren't necessarily sure whether they want to talk to each other all the time. That as a university, it is important that we prepare our students to exist in that global world because actually it's not going to go away. And many of the big challenges, many of the big opportunities actually exist across the spectrum, across the world, and not just focused um, in the UK. And two ways to do that. If I start at the bottom, in terms of learning a language, some of you may be doing languages at school or college and want to continue it, not necessarily as a main degree. But we have many languages here that actually you can integrate into your degree, whatever degree you're doing. Not every degree allows us to do that, but the vast majority of of them do. And if you can't do it as part of your degree, then actually we provide the opportunity for you to do it effectively as an extracurricular activity. Um, and as I say, a large number of uh, different languages that we actually learn. But the top one is something that, again, we value highly. The ability to give our students the opportunity to study abroad, whether it be for a semester or a, a full year. An increasing number of our students are doing that. It's not for everyone. Not everybody thinks it's a good idea or, or wants to take on that, that challenge. Because it can go right around the world, as it says here, North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australasia. Again, when I was in Hong Kong a few weeks ago, I met a couple of our students who were over there on placements, having an absolutely fantastic time. It can be a life-changing event if you do that sort of thing. So I would just recommend, if there's the slightest glimmer that this might be of interest to you, do explore it, and there are people out in the rooms outside who can help you talk through all of that. Put all of that together, and again, thinking about what our students think about Kiel. As part of that NSS, we actually um, have the opportunity to ask them to fill in effectively a free form. So most of it is you know, grade the university one to 10 or whatever else it might, might be. But there is a box that says, you know, what words would you use to describe your university? You put them all together and these are the things that come through. The campus is clearly an important part of life and there's a lot focused on here, but not exclusively here. But the teaching, the course, the staff, 
but friendliness, people, community. That sense of that supportive community is absolutely critical here, and it really is, I believe, what we describe often as the Kiel difference. The Kiel difference basically here is the people at Kiel, and that is absolutely critical. And part of that then is the support that we can give for our students when things go wrong. The vast majority of our students come in, work through their three, four, sometimes five years, and then they, they leave and everything has gone very, very smoothly. But it, is, it can be a difficult time in people's lives. There can be financial difficulties, there can be health difficulties, there can be family, there can be social issues that students need help with. And we've got a whole load of formal and informal ways to support this. One of the things that I'm proudest of in this university actually is our support for our students. But as I say, both formal and informal. An important part of that is the students' union. We have a very, very good student union here, and clearly one of their big roles is to make sure that there's various forms of entertainment go on within the building that you might have a chance to look around. But they also act as an important point of contact if things aren't quite right. And they can either do that independently or they can be a support for a student who maybe didn't think about coming directly to the university in the first place, but the student union can help them navigate through that and get the help that they need. It's also important, clearly, that we keep the campus up to spec. That's becoming more and more difficult as government funding starts to fade away. Um, but clearly, it's one of my jobs to try and make sure, apart from anything else, that we get other people to spend money on campus, because that's I'm very good at spending other people's money. Two or three different ways that we clearly try to do that. You, some of you will go to see the Barnes Hall, uh, the Halls of Residence, 450 new ensuite bedrooms that we opened at the beginning of this year, recognising that accommodation is an important part of the Kiel offer. But also in, in terms of academic, the, the one on the bottom right um, is just about out the ground. You'll, you'll see it. In fact, it's the actual outside of the building is well out of the ground. That will come on stream in the summer as a new building for the physical sciences, for chemistry, physics, forensic science, following on from some uh, building that we did around the natural sciences, around biology, the year before. Other developments you will see around the place, even the room that you will be out there talking about, having a coffee and talking to student support services or finance or admissions, that literally was opened up uh, yesterday after a big refurbishment in terms of creating informal learning spaces for our students who actually don't always want to sit in the library to work. They want to work as in groups and actually uh, have a slightly more relaxed environment to work in. So that will be formally opened on, on Wednesday uh, as, a, as a space that our students can do that. But also in terms of some of the more social spaces. We keep, have to keep on investing in some of those. Again, that's not always easy, but we have invested, for example, a lot in our outdoor sports facilities. I have to admit, when someone said that we were putting two beach volleyball courts on campus, my eye, eyebrows rose a little bit. Why on earth would we be doing that? Turns out that Newcastle under Lyme is actually one of the hotbeds of beach volleyball in the UK. Some of the club scene is very strong around here, and both as a competitive sport and as a social facility, you can imagine that that has gone down very well. But at the end of it, this is what it's about. This might seem an awful long way off, but I can tell you, when this is you, it will only feel like two minutes since you were sitting in this lecture theatre. It will come very, very quickly. And it's important that we think about that end point all the way through. And that's by doing all of the things that we talked about, by preparing you as the students for that outside world, for the things that you encounter, to go out there as experts and with the confidence to apply that expertise in all sorts of different ways as it comes along. Our students go for and work in a whole range of different areas, a whole range of different countries right across the world. This is clearly just a very, very small snapshot of some of the uh, places that our students have gone to in the last uh, few years, some particular relationships with some of those, those companies. So at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's about making you, our students, our graduates, have the impact that, as a Keele graduate around the world, we have seen in many, many places. Today is about giving you that information as I say, which is about Kiel. It won't, be about, it won't be a hard sell. It will be about laying out Kiel in front of you 
and hoping that actually you'll see something that actually fits with what you want and actually provides that quality of environment and education that you will value and that you will get value from. So at that, I'm going to hand over to Kieran, who will now talk about his journey into Kiel and beyond. Thank you. Okay, so good morning, everybody. So I'm just going to introduce myself. So my name's Kieran. Um, so that's a lovely photo of me from when I was in year 10 at school. I know I don't look that much different now, but we'll go with that one. Um, so I'm currently a second year history student, and I do that as single honours, which means that it's the only subject that I really study, but there is some options to add in modules from other subjects as well, which I'll get onto in a minute. Um, I'm from Newcastle under Lyme, so I'm a commuter student. So to show you what that looks like for me, uh, yeah, those are my dogs as well, that's why I live at home, I love them so much. So for me, this is why I live at home. It's literally, I'm two miles down the road, and it means I can get onto campus quite easily. Living at home isn't for everyone, a lot of people want to live away, but for me, the fridge, the fridge full of food is the main driver for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, everyone comes to Keele in a different way, so obviously I'm from quite close by, but that didn't necessarily mean that I knew a lot about Keel. Um, so this is a photo from an open day and I really would suggest while you're here today you just go and have a look around the campus and really ask some really probing questions of the other student ambassadors because they do know quite a lot and it's the best way to get to know just what Kiel's like. So I'm going to go back to when I was in year 10 again, so that's why I have that photo on the first slide. So all the way back at GCSE you can see I did French, music and food and nutrition. So I, choose, I chose three subjects which I just really enjoyed and thought I can do these for two years and I'm going to really get on with them. I decided after the two years that maybe that wasn't the case. So I decided to have a change at A-level and went for more sort of essay-based subjects. And that's when I took up history for the first time. Um, I just decided that history was something that I really enjoyed at that point, um, sort of outside of school. And it might be good to do something that I really enjoy again at A-level. So that's why I chose those. Now, you might be thinking, why are Kieran's A-levels at all relevant to my day-to-day? -day? Um, so that's when I come to what next. So I got to the Year 12 summer, and I thought, what am I going to do now? So far, I've just chosen things that I really enjoy. So I thought to myself, I really need to have a good think about this. So I went on to think, what kind of jobs do I want to do? So here are a few options. Um, as you can see, police might have been a bit of a dream for me at the size that I am, but... Um, yeah, so a few of them came to mind, but what I really thought was a lot of these things I can do easily. Euro Millions winner was the dream. Um, they're all things that are easy for me to um, do if I have a degree. Uh, it really would help me get those skills that I need to just get myself a bit further on. So that's when I decided that history was probably the right choice for me at degree level, because it really does just build up skills. Um, so I'm not learning to be one job in particular. I'm just getting a really good view of how to do things like writing, reading, communication skills, which go into sort of the areas that I wanted to go into, like the public sector and accounting and areas like that. So I really do think it's important that when you're looking, just make sure it's doing something that you enjoy and ask some questions that you get the idea if you're going to enjoy that subject or not. Because at the end of the day, there's no point doing three years of something that you really aren't going to enjoy. You just really have to get into it and have a passion for the subject that you do. So having said that, we're arriving at my first day at Keele. Um, so I arrived on campus and there was just a lot of people around. It's a really exciting time of the year. Uh, you get to really get to know what campus is like when it's got a load of students for the first time. Um, there's just a really good atmosphere, and I arrived for registration, and there's plenty of support available. I didn't quite realise just how big an operation it is, but there is literally staff and support everywhere for you. And then my first day of lectures, so I came in, and I, I thought this is the day that I'm really going to get started, and it really was an enjoyable day. Um, but what I'd say is that everyone's in the same position as you are when you arrive. So people seem to get a bit distressed that maybe they haven't met the person who is the best friend for the rest of their life in their first lecture. But lectures aren't the place where you build those relationships. So a seminar is my favourite place and my favourite sessions that we do on campus. So my first seminar um, was quite a good one for history. But as I said before, you can do a little bit of different subjects sometimes. So I did one module in education. So I went to this seminar, um, I had no idea who else was in this, this class because it was a completely different subject. So I went in, sat down, got all my stuff out, ready to go, 
and then I had this moment of, am I actually in the right place? So I checked my timetable and realized I was in the wrong room, so packed everything out, rushed out, and then went outside, rechecked, and I'd been in the right place all along. So I had to go back in and get everything out and just have that moment of embarrassment. But that's just the first week of uni for you. Things like that happen all the time, and it's just a really great way of breaking the ice and getting to know the people who you're with. And it just really sort of shows that everything isn't going to be as difficult as you think it is. You just get over those kind of things quite quickly. So on the screen, you've got a photo. So that's my favourite lecture theatre on campus. It's just across the way. It's got good sized tables for you to use on. So in the first few weeks of um, uni, you have Welcome Week that Student Services organise. So my favourite event at Welcome Week is the Freshers' Fair, purely because there's usually a lot of free stuff that you can get. Load up on pens for the semester. Um, there was also last year um, pizza, and this year we had McFlurry. So McDonald's came on and gave free McFlurries out, which I quite enjoyed a lot. Um, and if it's not your kind of thing to go out in the evenings, which isn't for me, I like to be in bed at 10, watching Desperate Housewives, then go for a nap. Um, there's sort of alcohol-free events in the week as well, uh, and a lot of more times things happen in the day or in the evenings, so that it's not just completely overwhelming for you as soon as you begin at uni. So, one of the things that really surprised me um, about starting at uni was the fact that my favourite textbooks all disappeared. So, because it's history in particular is such a specific area, these kind of books really just are the basis of where you look into your subject a bit more. So, maybe you're used to seeing these ones if you're not a human student of maths. Um, it really is my favourite thing to just go into a subject in really deep detail. So, we might start off on a really broad text, and then go into something in a lot more detail. So here are some of the books that I used in first year history. So you can see there's some really interesting ones there. You might have no interest in history and think I'm lying, but um, like Inquisition, Medieval Church is all my kind of favorite area of history. Um, and the history department here is really good for that. So we have some lecturers um, who really specialize in ecclesiastical history um, and all their teaching is research-based. So that means that they are telling you things that they themselves have researched and might not be anywhere else in sort of the textbooks, but they know absolutely everything about this area. So one of our lecturers researches this very specific area of Italy and have found this cult of saints where to this day they still throw snakes over a statue in the summer and have a brass band festival, which is absolutely bizarre today. But if you look at the historical context of it, it shows why these things carry on to this day. And it really does just appeal to me to get to know that really specific part of history. So another thing that surprised me was just how different modules were assessed. So I assumed that I would be coming and doing like one exam at the end of the year that would take me all the way through and I'd have to pass that. But for me, that isn't something that I'm particularly great at, so I was a bit anxious about it. But this is a typical module structure for me. So my favorite things to do are group presentations. Most people absolutely hate them because they don't like presenting. But you can probably tell I like talking about myself and being the center of attention quite a lot. So for me, it's a good time to exercise that skill. Um, yeah, so there's not always an exam, but there is quite often for us. Uh, and then participation marks as well were a shocker to me. Because a lot of the time, I think that I perform best when I'm in a debate with someone or an argument sometimes it can get into. Um, but I think participation marks for me really give me the chance to just show that I know what I'm talking about um, on a subject, which a lot of people sometimes worry about. But if you've read, done all your reading, you do start to realize that you actually are becoming really sort of an expert in that area. So I like to think of myself as quite good at very specific areas of history now, just because that's what I've done quite a lot of. And I think that if I'd maybe not had the participation marks, I wouldn't have participated as much and I wouldn't feel as knowledgeable as I do on that kind of area. So this is my favorite building on campus. It's the library, if you haven't seen it already. Um, so my course means that I have to have a lot of books, and the fact that the library opens 24 hours a day during term time is really useful for me, because I'm a bit of a scatterbrain. So I might be at home watching Desperate Housewives, and then I realize that I've actually forgotten to get a book out of the library, so I can just come onto campus and get that. It's sometimes said the library's busier at 3 a.m. than it is at 5 p.m. I'm not too sure about that one, but you can only find out by going at that time, really. Um, so for me as well, I find it easier to do all my work at the library and then go home. But the different study spaces mean that if we've got sort of a deadline that's coming up tomorrow, I can go and do it in a silent area, completely away from everyone, 
or if it's in a few weeks, I can go to a group study room with a few of my friends, and it doesn't feel quite so daunting on the task of doing it either. So, so far, I've talked quite a lot about myself and my particular experience. I know that a lot of you will have absolutely no interest in history or how history is based in the program. So I'm just going to discuss a bit more broadly about the university and things that I do. So this is my favourite other place on campus that isn't to do with doing my work. So this is Keel Hall. So it's the historic centre of campus and it's really great for taking photos for Instagram. Uh, so quite a common question is, can you go to Keel Hall? Yeah, the campus is open all year round. Anyone can go anywhere on campus to, like, well, within reason, you can't like go swimming in a lake. But um, yeah, so you can go around all the grounds. Um, you can go out for walks through the woods if everything gets a bit much for you. And it really is quite interesting to see just how different the centre of campus is to these sort of rural areas. So in term time, the centre of campus can feel quite cosmopolitan because there's so many people. There's sometimes poster sales, a farmer's market, plant sales earlier in the year as well. So you go from that to these kind of rolling hills and countryside within a few seconds that really appeals to me because I am quite, quite like the countryside, but at the end of the day, there's not that much you can do there. So having campus here as well is really good. Um, so the year starting in September means that we're getting into the winter stage now. So this is the photo that I took last year around this time. It is quite cold. Um, so my top tip for you on campus is to get yourself a coat like that. I've been wearing this quite a few times this week and I've had quite a few funny looks, but it keeps you warm, so what else can you do? Uh, yeah, so just moving on a bit further. So even though you're here, a lot of you are probably still wondering where actually is Keel. It's quite a common question I get on open days, where actually are we? Um, so as you can see, sort of midway between Manchester and Birmingham, uh, and then you've got quite other cities close, like Derby, Nottingham, Chester, Liverpool. And that means that if you're trying to go home or if you want to go to somewhere else, or for me, um, in this summer, I'm applying for an internship in Manchester. It means that it's quite easy to access and go to, and I'm not stuck going sort of three hours on a train through the middle of nowhere. It is really easy to get to these places. And if you have a rail card, I think it's about nine pounds to go to Manchester on the train as well. So those are really good like, transport links as well to have. So zooming in on my Google map, um, we've got... So as you can see, we've got Newcastle and Stoke. So as I'm from Newcastle, I've got a bit of a rivalry with people who live in Stoke. It's sort of that kind of thing. Uh, but they are basically the same place. Uh, they have separate councils, though, so it gets a bit... People get confused about bin days is the main thing that causes trouble. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that Keel is really quite close, so the blue dot is where um, I live, and then Keel's just below that. So we are really close to the town centre. It's not just on top of a hill in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so, as I said, Newcastle's the town centre. So, there's a lot of places to eat in Newcastle, which is why I like going there. It's got all the basics that you'll need for student life, like a home bargains, Palmland and Greggs. Uh, on the edge of the town centre, there's also bigger supermarkets. So, if you're feeling like you've got a lot of money that week, it's Morrison's or Sainsbury's. Or, if it's been a bit of a tough week on the finances, Aldi and Iceland are there as well. And there's loads of places in town which offer student discounts, and the Students' Union have started negotiating discounts with some of the independent stores as well. So they've got a good map of where they all are and have sort of really tried to get a few more discounts out as the town is becoming more and more sort of student-focused. And this is my favourite place to eat. Now, I wouldn't say it would be my favourite place to eat if I didn't have vegan friends who force us to go there all the time. But if you do go into Newcastle today... Have a look in there. Uh, you can also take your dogs in, which is another reason why I like going there as well. Um, and it's open through from the morning to the evening as well. So if you're planning on staying a bit later, have a look around. The town centre is quite a nice place to go to. Uh, so in terms of transport, it's only 15 minutes away on the bus, um, so it's quite easy to go. It goes directly from campus into town, and then the bus goes on to the city centre as well as other places like the train station and the hospital. Um, so you've got quite good transport links on campus as well to get you to those places that you might want to go to outside of you doing your work and learning. And as I said, city centre is Hanley, so that's got your like, typical city centre. Um, it's a bit smaller than other cities, but it's got places to eat. There's a Primark, uh, H&M, my favourite shop, TK Maxx, um, and there's a cinema and all other kind of things like that as well there. So this is the motto that some people have when your student loan drops out to the shops. So for me, as someone who is a compulsive spender, I like to head out a bit further away, um, so like Cheshire Oaks is towards Chester or the Trafford Centre near Manchester. Um, but what I will say is don't spend all your student loan in one go. So 
budgeting is the key. It sounds boring, but once you've got a good budget going, there's nothing more, more satisfying than realizing you've actually got control over your own finances. So my top three tips are stick to a weekly amount. So I tend to pay money from one account into another one so that I don't sort of spend it all without realizing. Um, number two is monitor your spending. It was a bit of a shock for me when I realized I'd spent 20 pounds at Greg's in one week. That was when I realized I had a problem. Um, and then the third one is don't spend it all in one week as someone always ends up doing. And you hear stories about, oh, I've lived off beans all year. Um, but if you do end up doing that sort of by accident, or if your student loans delayed coming in, student services can offer like financial support and they can do hardship loans and things like that as well. So if you are, you're not just sort of dropped off here and then go and fend for yourself. There is that sort of safety net there for you as well. So in terms of budgeting, Martin Lewis is the man to go for. So these are just a couple of the mantras that he has. Um, and there's also guidance on budgeting available from student services with an online resource called Black Bullion. And they sometimes have competitions where you can win. Um, I think recently they had like customized Nike trainers, um, Amazon Echo. So there's all sorts of things that you can win through that. So it's a really good thing to try and go on to and see if something's running. So as you can see, I'm a student ambassador. Uh, I find that that is one of the main things that I end up doing on campus. Um, so as you can see, at graduation, we get to wear these lovely mascot outfits. Um, but it's a really fun job to have. So it, does, it gives you paid work experience in a whole range of things. So we do outreach work with schools. So if you want to be a teacher, it's a really good one because we do go out to schools quite a lot. Um, we do sort of clerical support on campus as well. Um, and then we work on major events. Um, but it's also a really good place to meet some people who you might not have met before. So this is a photo of a group of us from the summer. Um, so on that photo, you've got students who do, so I do history, neuroscience, biomedical science, medicine, pharmacy, um, philosophy, foundation year, masters, all kinds of different levels. It's a really good way of getting to know people on campus. Um, and it's a really good way of just getting that extra bit of work experience as well. So I would say whilst you're here, I've said before, ask them questions, but really ask them some questions. You never know what some people do. Uh, there's really random things that people get involved in, like um, the different SU societies. So you might meet someone who's in the reenactment society or someone who's in the cider appreciation of Kiel society, all kinds of things. So really get to know what people do on campus. So, as I said, we worked over graduation, and one of the jobs that we had to do was get feedback from the graduates about what they were going to remember most about Kiel. And these are some of the things that they said. So the top one is usually squirrels. Whilst you're out today, I think I've become a bit of a squirrel expert, and as it's been raining, you might see a few about. Um, but then, like, things like lecturers, people, um, and the Kiel bubble are all things that people mention, um, because the campus environment is just so much different to most of the universities where you can see some staff live on campus. So I see some of my lecturers taking their children to nursery in the morning, um, and then you sort of have a chat with them if you see them around, and it's really that kind of environment where you can get to know people without feeling that it's just us versus them. It really is sort of a community of people more so than anything else. And on that topic, so... This photo here is my mum and my sister. So my mum is actually a lecturer here as well, which I kept hidden till the end of the talk. Um, so she lectures in nursing, and my sister's also a student nurse. So they're both here today if anyone's interested. So they're down at the Clinical Education Centre. Um, but my mum um, like trained at Keele before. It was the Keele School of Nursing Midwifery. Um, and then she was in practice for quite a while and came back to Keele because she thought it was such a good environment. So when she was at school, she'd had very little interest in schoolwork at all and never thought that she could do anything to do with academics or writing. And then this year, she's starting her doctorate in education. So I think that the environment that Keel's given her has really sort of allowed her to sort of flourish a bit. It's a bit weird to say that about your mom, but there you go. Um, and then my sister, um, she is doing her second degree. So she went somewhere else for her first one and then is training as a nurse. But while she's here, she's also got um, an 18-month-old baby. So that means that she's got support from campus that gives her the ability to do her course, so she would not have known about any of the support available without going to see student services before she applied. So whilst you're here, if you've got any questions about finance, I would go and speak to student services because there may be something you did not know existed whatsoever that can really help you whilst you're here. Uh, and then getting on to what I want to do afterwards. So as I said, because I do history, it's just sort of a free-for-all on what you want to do afterwards. So a few options for me would be postgraduate study. I do love studying history, but I think that I'm historyed out after three years of it next year. Um, so I'm thinking more sort of graduate schemes. So NHS general management is something that I'm interested in because of my family having done sort of healthcare-related things. 
Um, and being so close to hospitals means that it's quite easy to arrange work experience um, as well. And then I think I'd also finally like to move away from home after 22 years that it will be, so maybe moving out somewhere else as well. But thank you for listening to me so well. Um, I'm going to be on the local area stand just in the exhibition suite, so if you've got any questions afterwards, I'll be around for a few minutes, or I'll be there for the rest of the day. But thank you. Thank you. As Kieran said, we're both here now for a few minutes if you want, but otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for coming.